to this time of worship, worship of the living God. We're glad. Let's go to God in prayer. Wondrous God, our Father, we thank you for this time, for this time set aside in our lives, from our world, from all other distractions, to come and be with you. For Jesus told Martha when Mary was at his feet that Mary had chosen the better part and it would not be taken from her. Lord Jesus, we choose the better part this morning to come and be at your feet and receive all that you have for us, even as we worship you, as we learn from you, as we adore you, and as we receive your wondrous Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, we await your spirit as we listen for your word today. Come, Holy Spirit, and show us Jesus. Bring his presence into us. Amen. Our scripture this morning is Ezekiel 47, verses 1 through 12. Then he brought me back to the entrance of the temple. There water was flowing from below the entryway of the temple toward the east, for the temple faced east. And the water was flowing down from below the south side of the temple, south of the altar. Then he brought me out by way of the north gate and led me around on the outside to the outer gate that faces toward the east. And the water was trickling out of the south side. Going on eastward with a cord in his hand, the man measured 1,000 cubits and then led me through the water and it was ankle deep. Again, he measured 1,000 and led me through the water and it was knee deep. Again, he measured a thousand and led me through the water, and it was up to the waist. Again, he measured one thousand, and it was a river that I could not cross, for the water had risen. It was deep enough to swim in, a river that could not be crossed. He said to me, mortal, have you seen this? Then he led me back along the bank of the river. As I came back, I saw on the bank of the river a great many trees on the one side, and on the other, he said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Ra'aba, and where it enters the sea, the sea of stagnant waters. The water will become fresh. Wherever the river goes, every living creature that swarms will live, and there will be very many fish once these waters reach there. It will become fresh, and everything will live where the river goes. People will stand fishing beside the sea, from Engedi to En Eglion. It will be a place for the spreading of nets. Its fish will be of a great many kinds, like the fish of the great sea but its swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They are to be left for salt. On the banks on both sides of the river, there will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither, nor their fruit fail, but they will bear fresh fruit every month because the water for them flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for healing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture this morning is from Acts 10, 44 through 48. Hear God's word. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. And then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who've received the Holy Spirit just as we have? 
So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Amen. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of God's holy word. The faith statement that we've been studying and walking through is the Apostles' Creed. And so regarding the third person of the Trinity today, we come upon the statement, I believe in the Holy Spirit. And the reason this statement was added to the Creed, which I did not know until this week, so maybe you already knew this, was because there was this there was this idea out there that the Spirit of God was just the activity of God rather than a person who also was God. So Gregory of Nazianus, the fourth bishop of Constantinople, wrote this, if he, the Holy Spirit, were considered only as the activity of God, he would be the action, but would not himself do anything, and would cease to exist as soon as the action occurred. For this is the nature of an activity. How is it then that, the, that he acts, and he says various things, and defines, and is grieved, and is angered, and has all the qualities that belong to clearly to one who moves? and not to movement." End of quote. The church fathers then, in the first council of Nicaea 325, felt that they needed to add to the Apostles' Creed this simple statement, we believe in the Holy Spirit. Later, as time went on, heresies about the Holy Spirit continued to plague the church. And so when they expanded the belief statement about the Holy Spirit, they added it to another creed what we know as the Nicene Creed. What then do we believe about the Holy Spirit? Do we listen for the Spirit? Do we want to be moved by the Spirit? Do we want to be or are we filled with the Spirit? What does the Spirit do in us and in our world? Well, if we look back at the story, which is God's story, we find that in the midst of creation, the Ruach, the wind or the Spirit of God hovered, hovered there in the midst of the creation process. And as I searched, I found the first time that the Spirit is mentioned in regards to a person was with Joseph, the prophetic son of Jacob, who, who became the overseer in Egypt. Remember Joseph, the coat of many colors? And he not only saved the people of Egypt, he saved the 12 tribes of Israel from famine. All through the First Testament, as we call it, the Old Testament, the Spirit was given for a specific purpose, leadership, prophetic proclamation, and the other work that people did for God. There were people like Moses, Bezalel, Joshua, Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, and I won't name them all this morning. In our Second Testament, we often call the New Testament, there was this 400 years of silence after Malachi gave the last testimony. And then we hear and we see in the Gospels this flurry of activity with the angel visits and the work of the Holy Spirit in making ready for the coming of the Messiah. The Holy Spirit actually comes into view as Jesus comes out of the water of baptism and the Spirit descends and we hear the voice of God out loud. There was the Trinity in full view for all to see and hear. Then later in that, in that famous reading of Isaiah, Jesus takes the scroll and he claims the person of the Spirit. Jesus says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me. And he goes on to tell all the things that Isaiah had prophesied that Christ would do. Jesus taught us about the ministry and work of the Spirit. Oh, that's nice. There's a bag, Catherine. Riley's bringing Conrad a bag to play with. Jesus taught us about the ministry and work of the Spirit, or the Advocate, also known in Greek, parakletos. In John 14, Jesus said, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another Advocate to help you, and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him. It neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. He lives with you and is, will be with you, will be in you. 
And then a bit later, Jesus says this very interesting statement about the Spirit. He says, when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because they do not believe in me. About righteousness because I'm going to the Father and you will see me no longer. And about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. Now I found this declaration about the Spirit so intriguing. The Spirit will prove the world is wrong. Wrong about sin, not by naming the actions of sin, but the core of sin, which is unbelief. Wrong about righteousness because the only righteous one was Jesus. And even though he was put to death because of our sin, he was the righteous one and became our righteousness as he ascended to the Father. And then wrong about judgment. The judgment is for the ruler of the world, Satan or the devil. And those who stand with him they will be the ones judged. Even the world, Jesus said, cannot receive the Spirit. Even though the world can't receive the Spirit, the Spirit is still at work in the world, getting the world ready, preparing the world to hear the good news that we bring. It's not just me. We all are called to bring the good news. Jesus told us that it was the Holy Spirit who would bring Jesus to our mind that he's the spirit of truth and he will tell us truth. He will remind us of the words in scripture, the direction we need to take, the convict us of the sin. The Holy Spirit gives to those who believe and who will receive the spirit, the power to speak in Jesus name, the authority that Jesus gives to do greater works, the gifts and the expressions of the fruit of the spirit, the love, the compassion of the spirit. The Spirit is the seal, Paul goes on to tell us, for everlasting life. The one who sanctifies us in Christ as we cooperate with the Spirit. The Spirit's the one who helps us pray and is our comforter. And as I came to the end of that section of reading again, I said to myself, we can't be the church without the Spirit. And I think that's why Jesus told his disciples, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. It's interesting if we read into Acts. Um, there's actually, um, if you counted the number of times the Holy Spirit in Acts is spoken or read, you read it. 82 times in 28 chapters. The Spirit, that's where we see the Spirit alive and, and working, and, and, is, and, is, and we can just get these great pictures all the way through the book. We heard one this morning of Cornelius, when the story of him receiving, and his family receiving the Spirit. Then there was Stephen, one of the seven deacons. He was able to do signs and wonders and preach that mighty sermon. And after the sermon that said, he was filled with the Holy Spirit and he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus at God's right hand. And then when Stephen was stoned, he was able to forgive those who stoned him. I invite you to reread Acts. <laughs> we, the church today, need the Holy Spirit. We need all of the gifts and the graces God can give us through the Spirit. And, God, and Jesus reminds us that God is generous. God, God is good and wants to give us these gifts. He said, if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, and I'm assuming all of you that have children are giving good gifts, correct? Then how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Truly, we ask Jesus, we pray to Jesus to minister in our world. But you know what Jesus says? Go. Be my ministers. That's how I'm going to work in this world, is through each of you. And how do we become his witnesses? Through the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit. So this morning, we have the, we have the wonderful passage of Ezekiel that Harriet read. <clears throat> but the preceding chapter 7, that lovely passage, we, um, there's, we hear that Ezekiel gets has to get ready for all of that and then and there's a vision that's given to him and the, in that vision is a man and the man and he in the vision walk about 
as he measures all of the temple. And then finally, the glory of the Lord and his vision fills the temple. And the Lord told Ezekiel how the people had defiled the temple by their idolatry. And then, but when they would be ashamed and repent, when they would face up to their idolatry and repent, then Ezekiel could tell them these visions that he had seen. And that's where, so the next, that's in, that's in 40 and 43, and then we finally get to 47. And we see the water, and the picture of the water flowing out of the temple. As he and the man move away from the temple, the, the man keeps measuring the distance, and the water gets deeper. And it gets deeper until it becomes that river. And by that river are the trees with the fruit and the leaves for healing, the fruit for food. And the river flows into the desert and into the Dead Sea. And wherever the river goes, every living creature that swarms will live. And there will be many fish once the waters reach there. It will become fresh and everything will live where the river goes. So I thought about our church. I thought about our church family. Um, life flows out from the presence of God in the temple, that picture that he gave Ezekiel. But we are the body of Christ. We are said, scripture says, Paul says, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, the living temple of our Lord Jesus. So he does not dwell in this building, except when we're here, because we're where God dwells. You don't have to come here, but we do. It does help to be together as the body of Christ. And as we are filled with the Holy Spirit of Jesus and God, and we go away from this place, we take the Spirit with us. And we find ourselves going to places where people are dry and dusty. We go to places that seem lifeless and empty. Maybe they seem stagnant, like the Dead Sea. We find ourselves with those who have hearts that need new encouragement. I was with someone like that this week. Or those who are desperately just in need of a word of hope. I am thankful for J.D. Walt, who does the seedbed text, for helping me see this picture. Because I was preaching on the Holy Spirit today, so it was kind of him to have that in the last two weeks of his teaching. We are the river streaming out over the thresholds from wherever we're gathered, whether it's the sanctuary or coffee house church in the hall, whether it's Bible study, wherever we've been gathered, when we leave, I pray we have received the Holy Spirit and we have that living water of Christ, his life, his hope, his love. But why do we need to keep coming together? We need to receive the Spirit over and over and over again. In Scripture, Jesus breathed the Spirit on the disciples. And then the Spirit came powerfully upon them at Pentecost. And then the Spirit came again when they were gathered in a room. It shook the room. The early disciples knew they needed the communion of the body of Christ and the filling of the Holy Spirit to be empowered, to be sent out to whatever they were going to face. Do we not face things each week? I don't know. Do you face things each week? I don't see much movement of the head. Yes or no? It's really simpler. You could do this like the kids like to do. I face things each week. I don't know about you. This is real life in the body of Christ. This is not some made up heavenly thing. This is heaven come to earth. And the early disciples knew it. And guess what? We're the disciples for 2022. So we need to know it too. And I pray that's why we're here today. And as pray that's why we're, every day we come to worship, whether we come on FaceTime, whether we come on, I'm sorry, Facebook, whether we come on Zoom, or whether we come in person. Because every time we come, we have communion, not always served on the table. Sometimes it's the fellowship we have together with the Holy Spirit. He is who brings our worship and us alive. Otherwise, it's just a tradition we do, and we stamp it and say, okay, I've done my hour a week. Oh, please, 
I don't want that to be what we do. Otherwise, I don't need to be here. And you don't need to be here. He is who brings this table alive in us. Otherwise, it's just bread and juice. It is the inward work of the Spirit that creates the life, puts the life of Christ in us, and fills us with refreshment and love that we have enough to share as we move out over that threshold into the rest of the world. Let's go to God in prayer. Laura, there is more. It was never meant just to be a book that we were supposed to read or some rules we were to follow or this guy, Jesus, that we were to memorialize and think he was a great guy. There is more. Thank you that there is more. That you are alive and your spirit is alive and is here with us and in us. For, Lord, we pray today, we ask again. We may have asked before, but we are asking you again in Jesus. Lord Jesus, would you send us your Holy Spirit as you promised? Would you pour your Spirit in us and on us and around us? Would you give us that refreshment we desperately need? It is the water to our souls. It is the hope for eternity. It is your seal on us that says we are yours and you are ours. We bless you this morning that you want to give us your eternalness, your lifeness, your all in all in us, even in these mortal bodies that are truly just skin and bones and some water. But you want to give us the living water that Jesus promised the woman at the well. You want to give us the energy of a one-year-old <laughs> packaged in the Holy Spirit for eternity. Bless you, Lord God. You love us. You love us. And you want to manifest yourself in us and through us and around us. Thank you for giving this church your spirit. And Lord, we pray for the gifts that come with it. We want the Holy Spirit. We want the whole package, Lord. We want all of you for all of us that we might be alive and alert to what you are doing outside the thresholds. For indeed, the farther away the water went, it started as a trickle. And then, Lord God, it went deeper. It was ankle, then knee, then hip, then, then shoulder, and then so deep, Ezekiel couldn't even swim in it. Lord, the farther we go from this building and we take you, you will provide the deep water of the Spirit for wherever there's a need. Lord, if we will wait for you, if we will remember to seek you and to ask, because we can't get it on our own. You are the giver of all good things, Father God. You are the giver through your Son, Jesus, of your Spirit. Lord, we seek your mercy. We seek your grace and your Holy Spirit. Lord, this morning, we believe that you have more for the church, the church all over all the world. And Lord, especially here in North America and in Europe, where the Spirit seems to, to in some places, have left the building entirely. And there's no one meeting there. The building is a shell. And the church has dissolved. But God, we are still here. So the day we ask again, 
for your Holy Spirit. That the church might take the word and the, and the witness of Christ out where there are still people who don't know you. Who don't know that there is a spirit to give them life everlasting. So, Lord, in, that, in, in the name of your Son and through your Holy Spirit, we pray. We pray for those around us in need, for your Spirit is, is with us and willing to be in us and do and give the gifts of healing and wholeness and goodness and mercy and life and gentleness, all the fruit, leadership, imagination, all that we need. So this day, Lord, Bill, we pray for Bill this morning. Bill, there's emergency. We don't, I don't know the nature of it, but the name came to me this morning, and they asked that we would pray. So, Lord Jesus, we pray your life into Bill, and we pray now that, that whatever the situation is, you know it. And we speak your name, and we speak your life, Lord Jesus Christ, into Bill. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And this morning we think of Bob Hughes and Bev and Rafi and Lila and Lord Jesus. We speak your life into them as they um, experience COVID and are hoping not to get COVID at the beginning, at the end. We don't know where, but Lord, we pray. And by praying, we mean we speak you, Jesus. We speak your life and your goodness and your healing into each of them. And we bless them in your name for them to be, to overcome by your grace this COVID and have it never again, oh Lord. And this morning we continue to pray over Kenny and we pray over his waiting for a doctor's appointment and we pray over his knee and over the blood clot that wants to linger. And so this morning, Jesus, in your name, we pray by speaking your life into Kenny, into his knee, and to tell that blood clot to leave, and to pray life into the spaces that there's some question about. Lord, this morning, we pray life into Buck's knee, and into his back and his feet, because they, he's challenged some days to walk because of these, because of these things, because of this chronic but lord we speak your life lord jesus for you didn't make us to have chronic illness you made us to be whole and healthy and so lord we pray in your name and lord this morning you made us to be in relationship and to family so lord this morning i pray over kaylee and i pray over her marriage and over her little guy conrad lord i pray over Kaylee, and I speak your name, Jesus. For when we speak your name, we speak life, and we speak all that you have for that marriage, that oneness, that like you are with God and the Holy Spirit, that she and Tyson would be that together. Oh, Lord, this morning we pray over Sandy and over that hip of hers that continues to cause her grief. So, Jesus, we don't give up. We don't give in. We pray in your name. We pray your life, Jesus, into Sandy's hip this morning. And we bless you for being God who continues to give life and hope. We pray over Stephen as he continues to walk but has days when that walking is not so good. So we pray, Jesus, your life into Stephen. And we praise you that Gail is driving again after getting her knee replaced. We bless you for that goodness, Lord praise you and thank you we thank you that bruce and suzette got to meet bruce's grandson for the first time yesterday and he's a grown man we bless you for that blessing this day we thank you for all those that are traveling and enjoying the summer lord god and we ask your blessing on them that you bring them back safe and sound and refreshed by not only their vacation, but the filling of your Holy Spirit. We pray this in the wondrous and holy name of Jesus. Amen.
It is a time when we pause in our outward worship and we do a, we, a, 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 a listening worship, but we do a giving worship. We worship out of the gifts we've been given and we are invited to worship by giving of ourselves, of our tithes, of our offerings, whatever God puts on our hearts. Maybe you want to be part of the giving, the collecting of offering next week, and that'll be what your gift is. Whatever God is putting on your heart, out of the bounty that God has given, we worship God by our offering now. Holy and everlasting God, our Father, before the world was created, you created, before the world was created was your Holy Spirit. And through Christ and the Spirit, you created all we see and the gifts we are given. We bless you this morning for all the wonderful tangible and intangible gifts that we are offered because of your grace over us. Thank you that you allow us and invite us, and in our worship, we give to you out of what we have, out of what you have gifted us, even our very lives. We offer them to you now and ask that you would multiply them by your grace and goodness. Amen. Let us say what we believe using the Apostles' Creed. I believe. And God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, <laughs> suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting.
The hymn says we give ourselves, all of us, to the Lord. And so in like way, the Lord wants to give all himself to you, even his Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.